If you want to support the platform, just in case anything like this happens again, you can do it by way of PayPal, Patreon, uh, Cash App, and also by um, the Anchor. And you can also further support the platform by way of going to the uh, the Teespring store or um, the shoe store that is located in the comment section below. An 11 year old Mississippi boy was aimed at by police officers after calling 911 for help and now that he's home recovering, he's urging his mother to blame the cops and not herself. Adarian Murray was aimed at in the chest earlier Saturday morning, shortly after Enola, police officers arrived at his home in response to a domestic disturbance call. Murray's family attorney, Carlos Moore, stated that one of the officers has ordered everyone in the house to come out with your hands up. But when Adarian complied, the officers open fire. Moore stated in an interview that Adarian remembers the entire incident and began receiving counseling on Friday to help cope with the trauma. In the meantime, he's also been reassuring his mother that she did nothing wrong. Quote, he told his mom not to worry. It's not her fault. She was blaming herself and he's trying to encourage her not to blame herself. He also stated that it's the cop's fault. It's not your fault. He was doing all he could to help protect his mom and he ends up getting harmed. Moore stated that he's outraged at the Inanola Police Department's handling of the situation. Moore also stated that officers involved have been put on paid leave, which he calls a paid vacation for harming someone. Moore also added that the Murray family hopes to eventually see the officers charged with aggravated assault. The police department so far has refused to release the footage, citing an ongoing investigation, though Moore noted that the other police departments have previously released body cam footage within hours of these incidences. Moore stated that he believes that the department reluctance to release the footage immediately indicates that the footage will spark a public outcry. The Inanola Police Department declined to comment. Quote, we know that if it was in their favor, they would immediately release the body cam footage. So we believe that it is worse than we can imagine. Moore also stated that his firm is preparing to file a federal lawsuit next week to obtain the body camera footage in hopes to also obtain footage from a nearby gas station. Moore also stated that Adarian is slowly recovering and getting better by the day, but continues to struggle with breathing due to his collapsed lung and often feels as though he is suffocating. Moore describes Adarian as a bubbly child who has struggled to understand why an officer would harm him. Quote, he is full of personality, an outstanding 11-year-old. He's wise beyond his years. He has an old soul. It was like talking to an old man. Moore also stated that he and other adults have been trying to explain to Adarian that it is still important to trust law enforcement and that there are many good cops, but he stated that the child may never feel fully comfortable around police ever again. Quote, emotionally, mentally, he's still very much traumatized. He keeps asking, what did he do wrong? Why did the officers harm him? He just can't understand. Mississippi police officer Greg Capers have been placed on administrative leave after he wounded 11-year-old Adarian Murray in Indianola last Saturday. The incident of the unarmed boy in his home after he called 911 to report a domestic disturbance has triggered calls from family and wider community for Mr. Capers to be fired and for a thorough Department of Justice investigation into the police department. Adarian's mother, Nikayla Murray, also stated that she had asked her son to call 911 after her former partner showed up irate at the family's home on BB King Road at around 4 a.m. on May 20th. Miss Murray stated that the two officers arrived at around 6 a.m. and ordered everyone inside to come out. Darian was following his mother out of the house when he was harmed by the police officer in the living room. The police department later confirmed that Mr. Capers had discharged his weapon. Darian was airlifted to a hospital with life-threatening injuries, including a collapsed lung, fractured ribs, and a lacerated liver. Adarian has since been released from the hospital. The family attorney stated that the city was stonewalling their request for body camera footage to be released and had not offered an apology or an explanation. Now, this is my thing. Um, the domestic disturbance, again, it had to do, wasn't specifically stated in the uh, the first part of the other article that they had up. This was due to the fact that one of the uh, the children's fathers had showed up late at night and the mother felt threatened, right? 
not sure, you know, what type of relationship they've had or what is it that they've had to uh, go through and what it is that they've had to face, but she felt threatened. And she has a right to directly call the police because it is her and her home with those children. There is nobody there to uh, protect her or anything of that nature. So after some time went by, two officers came directly to the home and they ordered everybody out. Now, I'm guessing that the cops did not know that the main suspect that they were looking for had already left before police were called. So everybody proceeded to come directly out of the house. And as the young 11 year old was coming, you know, out of the house, he ended up being hit because one of the cops ended up discharging his weapon. Right. And. You have people trying to tell the young boy, like, hey, we understand what happened to you, but always understand that there are good cops out there. How do you turn around and have a traumatic experience? Like, he has a lacerated liver. He got lacerations on his liver. He has a collapsed lung. He was wounded mortally. Very easily, that could have been the end of his life. And you're going to turn around and try to tell this young boy that, hey, we understand everything that happened to you, but just know that there are good cops out there. How, how, how do you do that? How do you do that with a straight face? How? Like I said, this is what I don't even understand. That's an 11 year old boy. If he wants to look at a situation the way that he wants to look at it because of what took place, allow him the freedom to do that. And then after he goes through that, allow him the freedom to then figure out if there are actually good ones and bad ones. Because what we know about the story is that there are bad ones. And I'm going to explicitly state that all of them are bad. Everybody in that police department. And why am I stating that? No police camera footage was released. The police department did not release any type of statement about what took place. They didn't release any type of an apology, right? The uh, uh, the chief or whoever that is over all of those officers, he didn't come out and say nothing. And let me just reiterate again, they still did not release the body cam footage because I'm pretty sure like normal, they're working on, they're going to have their people for six months working on trying to edit the footage in a way so that it's a 50-50, that it can go either way. But they're going to make sure to frame it so that it goes in the way of the officer. That 11-year-old, that's not a big kid. That's not a tall kid. That's not somebody that they can say has Herculean strength or anything like that. Nah, that's a small kid right there. You're not going to tell me that you saw him as some type of a threat. You're not going to tell me that he had a bladed stance. He looked like that he could do anything. You're not going to tell me that it was just so dark in that house that you couldn't tell what figure was what figure. You're not going to tell me that. You're not going to tell me that. And this is why I continue to state that no matter what the officers look like, this ends up being the case a lot of the times. And then they want to come out and say that, oh, well, you know, there are good cops out there. Where? So, so how about this? How about this? And I say this every single time. If there are good cops out there, whenever any of these incidences take place, why don't the good cops come out and say something? Why don't the good cops come out and release an apology? Why is it that it's all up to one party, which is usually the head? Why is it only that individual that comes out there and that wants to apologize? Why aren't all the good cops be like, you know what? Again, we understand your anger. We are, uh, you know, completely with you. We understand that you are mad at us, but as the cops that had nothing to do with the situation, we want to let you know that we are sorry that this, w why doesn't that happen? I've yet to see anything like that take place to happen. You know why? Because it's a gang culture. Because it's basically stated with, with so little words or pretty much none at all, that if you stand against that, you are not for the rest of your brothers and your sisters. Right. That's in a sense what it stated, you know, that thin blue wall, the thin blue line. That's what that is. So that wall, that type of mentality stops any good cops from actually arresting 
or letting the the chief or the upper ranks know that there are bad apples in the bunch that line of thinking stops any good cops from actually speaking out and actually delivering an apology because it's going to make everybody else look bad see how that works but yet everybody wants to always state that they're good cops where they all wear the same color they all back the same thing if one does something they're going to stand directly by that cop silently and they're going to support them so again where are those good cops and you know the 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 most dreadful thing about this is that if you go look at the story online like yahoo and you read a lot of the comments they're blaming the young boy for what it is that took place they're blaming the young boy and I mean that is a boy. That's not that's not a young man. That 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 is not a whatever you want to sit up there and call it. He's eleven. That is a boy. That is a boy. And they're specifically blaming him for why it is that he ended up in the hospital. They're stating that there has to be more to uh, the story that a cop just wouldn't do this and yada yada yada. But mind you. Whenever stories like this come out and the cops specifically harm people that are in their neighborhoods, oh, there's there's no need to know what the rest of the story is. Fire the cop, get rid of the chief, get rid of the sheriff, clean the whole house out. There's a whole bunch of corruption. It's always this whole thing as if they know, right? So the innocent are actually innocent and the criminals are actually criminals, right? But when it comes to black people and their interactions with the police, black people, no matter if it's young or old, are always guilty. And it's always up to black people to prove their innocence before they can get any type of justice. And then when it comes to the police departments, they're always innocent. They're always innocent. Even when the footage is out there, they're always still innocent. Ain't it amazing? Again, this young man could have lost his life. And the main thing that people can sit up here and do is blame him. <laughs>